They've won Tonys and Oscars and Emmys and Grammys. There's no red carpet because they're home in their jammies. From Melrose Place to Broadway to Janeway and her crew. Let Seth and James bring all the stars to you. Hey, you. They're entertaining everyone. So who's going to grouse? Just sit right back and you'll hear some tales on Stars in the Oh, the show is going to be so good. We've already had so much fun and we weren't even on the air. Hi, everybody. This is Christine Petty. Welcome to my palatial mansion. Um, this was uh, the apartment of choice today. I had several to choose from, you know. And I'm here with my poodle Clarence at my feet. And we are going to celebrate the ladies of Forbidden Broadway. So I have been asked by Seth uh, very generously over this pandemic to to uh, sub host the show a couple of times. So we had a uh, Forbidden Broadway special way at the beginning when the pandemic started and then a, a second special with just the guys that I worked with the incredibly talented forbidden guys. And now it's the ladies turn. And I'm so glad that we're getting to do this before stars in the house reduces down to, I think it's one day a week. Uh, I have been in, involved with forbidden Broadway since the early nineties and just forever in a day and done it all over the country, all over the world. And I've spent a lot of time with a lot of ladies and uh, we also have somebody who was there much closer to the beginning who I'm very excited about talking to because I came and I came in 10 years after it started. So uh, it is a legendary musical uh, satirical review. If you don't know about it, Google it. And I'm just so proud and happy to be a part of it. So I, I, I'm going to start off. I'm, I, I can't even remember who I worked with first. But early, early on, one of the first people I did work with when I did the show, the first sit-down production of Forbidden Broadway was in Detroit. And I remember I had, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring her on first and we'll talk about it. Uh, my beautiful, wonderful, talented friend, Karen Murphy. Come on up, Karen Murphy. Hello. Hi. Hi, honey. You know, Karen, before we did Forbidden <laughs> Forbidden Broadway in Detroit. I was sitting on my parents' porch reading the New York Times magazine section and it was an article about Detroit. And it was a it it was a depressing article. It was really depressing. And I and I don't usually didn't usually read articles like that. I just went for the arts and leisure stuff. For some reason I I I read this article about this depressed city and how miserable it was. And if you went there, you would be killed. And I thought, wow, good. <laughs> but I still remember, Christine, the enthusiasm of the audiences. Well, that's the thing. Then the next thing I know, yeah. the first paying gig I get is Detroit. And I thought, oh, that's what I get. I'm being punished. We should but, let people know that you and I shared a two-bedroom, two-bath apartment. Yeah, that, that was not a punishment at all. Yeah. That was it, we were it ended up being the best experience, really honestly to date in many respects. We were treated so beautifully. We worked at the Gem Theater in Detroit. Um, and Ray Shepherdson, who produced the show and renovated the Gem Theater, also the Fox Theater across the way, uh, was it was like something out of a sitcom, don't you think? And you were up making cookies till 3.30 in the morning. Yes, the musical comedy Cookie Company. And I just found, oh, I wish I had it. I just found the little cup. It was a sour cream container that said, cookies, 50 cents, honor system. I just found it, Karen. I kept it in a box of, I don't know. Um, I got to get, I got to learn how to purge. But uh, you had done the show prior to that. What I was opened, your first experience I with the show? I opened the company in Boston in October of 84. So the show had been in New York. Yeah. And this was the first company outside of New York. And uh, it was a, a sellout for the first two years. It ended up running six. And uh, in this magnificent room, newly renovated room, downtown Boston, the, the um, terrace room, which had been a storied nightclub um, uh, in, in the 30s and 40s. Oh, and really? we were, I mean, and the, the quality of talent who came through that room, uh, it, it was fabulous. And Gerard Alessandrini, who created Forbidden Broadway, would try out new material there. And uh, we had a good life. And it was, it was just such, 
I was just, as you said earlier, so proud to be part of it. Such quality work from everybody. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, we have also D Hody who, she uh, I, me. Hey D. Hi, Hi D. So, it's really good to see you. So D, <laughs> you were, you were, in the show. Tell me your history with the show. You came in quite early. Yeah. Comparatively I, in the group. I think I was the first replacement. I replaced Nora May Ling in the oh. original. Movie. I know. It's like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I admit it. But it you know started. T tell everybody where it started. It started at Paulson's on 72nd Street, which then became Steve McGraw's and then a bunch of other things. And I don't know what it's called. It's, now. The, it's the triad now, but the it's triad, right. okay. essentially it's the same space. And um, it was a big hit. It was running, you know, and the, the big thing was that they did the 11 o'clock show so people from Broadway could get, or 11.30 show, could get up and see the late show on Fridays and Saturdays, I believe. Um, I had not seen it, but I got an audition for it. And I, th I never thought of myself as a mimic or a comic or a, you know, I mean, I can do funny things, but uh, the audition, I, I, I think it was my Julie Andrews that got me the gig. And probably my cheekbones, you know, because it was that thing. But <laughs> um, I remember going to see it before I started rehearsal. And, you know, it's such a rare thing when you can when you get to see the show you're going to be in. It kind of only happens yes. for a replacement. I, or I got show. to do that too, yeah. It, it, it's like amazing. And I remember sitting there thinking, I can't believe I was so lucky I got this job. Look at this look at all the work I have to do, but look at how the people are responding and oh my God, they're having so much fun. And, um, and, and that was that. And then there we all were in the same dressing room, zipping each other up and zipping each other down and, you know, running behind the Mylar curtain and, you know, that. And, <laughs> but um, we, I did it for, it was 80 before you all were born. 83 84 somewhere in there um and we did it for another like six months ish in new york i could have that timeline wrong gerard would be the one who'd know he was in the show then oh boy that's right yeah fred barton played it was bill carmichael and chloe webb and gerard and me and fred yeah. So you really were the first. You, it, it, they didn't replace a lot of the other people. You were you. It wasn't like the whole cast got replaced. No. Uh, Nora left because she I don't know had a fight with Gerard or had got another job or I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> that was not my. I, I got the job. That's all I know. Um, and who who were some of the people that you had to do impressions of and did it make it? I don't believe personally that you have to be an impressionist to do Forbidden Broadway. Ironically, even though I do impressions, I don't believe that. You you, you don't have to be an impressionist to do the show well. You have to just be funny and be a, a sound musical comedy performer. I, but, you're, I absolutely agree with you because I had no idea that I had that knack for, I mean, I'd listened to the, the when I was a kid, we had the original recordings of My Fair Lady and Camelot. So I did a pretty good Julie Andrews and that's, uh -huh. and then I ended up doing, this was um, the the Merman and Martin thing, you know, me, you know, uh, right, right. That. and uh, Woman, Woman of the Year was playing. So I did Lauren Bacall. That was my big claim. I'm to one of the boys. I sing, I got one, I'm of the one of the girls. I, my voice is as low as the tunes I destroy. <laughs> and, um, Let's see, what else did I do? Because uh, then when when Lauren Bacall left, Raquel Welsh replaced her. So I did her, I did them both, you know, like oh, an option. Oh, so Gerard wrote something for, for when Raquel Yeah, well, it was, it, was a, it was like a reprise of the same number, but Raquel Welsh just kept bumping into the scenery. <laughs> <laughs> I remember spinning and banging into the Mylar and stuff. And then I did, oh, I did um, Linda Ronstadt in Pirates. Oh, right. Um, which was hilarious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't remember everything. Oh, oh, uh, uh, Evita, Barbara Streisand. You know, don't cry for me, Barbara Streisand. The truth is I never liked you, whatever. And um, <laughs> early, early, early stuff. And the, the one thing that was always a, well, it was sort of my nemesis. He put in a number. This is how old a long ago it was. He put in a cat number that remember when actors played people, whatever. Yeah. And he gave it to me. And it was one of those things I could not learn. There have only been about 
three things in my life that I could not get a grip on. And he said, it's going in Friday night, it's going in Friday. I was like, yeah, he's not going to do it because I can't get through the rehearsal. And I blanked. I mean, I literally started the thing, got a big laugh. Remember when actors play people? And I was gone. And I turned around to Fred, who was like, I, I got nothing. <laughs> Sorry. It was egg salad. And, um, Did you do Cheetah Rita's? No, that was before that. Oh. That it was, was before Cheetah Rita you were in it? Yeah. Yeah. You were in it. I think you were in it, D. When it it it, 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 although it didn't seem like it at the time to you, I'm sure. Certainly, compared to later productions, you didn't have nearly as many intricate costume changes. You had plenty no. of stuff to do, but right, but there was no um, money for all that. With it, we were like right. silly wigs on our heads and bad hats and funny little capes and things. But we wore the black gowns and the the guys wore some kind of a tuxedo y thing and it was the suggestion of stuff, a sword, you know, gloves, that kind of a thing, a boa. It was, uh, it's become quite elaborate. Um, and Karen, what about you? What about your uh, impressions and your, um, lear you know, just learning curve as you evolved into the I show? Went in, I went into rehearsal in September of 84. So I did learn Cheetorita. I did the Avita number. Uh, uh, that was the time one of Gerard's themes was um, the uh, Catholicism on Broadway. Be a Catholic because oh, yeah, right, right, right. A nonsense and all that. So there was that number, and there was um, Lacage was up and running. And I did the Julie Andrews, uh, Victor Victoria. Oh. No, just you meet Julie Andrews. Just, yeah. And then. God, um, I don't remember that one. Oh, gosh. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And tell me, um, did, in Boston, did you get celebrities coming to see it in Boston? Oh, yes, yes. Uh, they came through. There was one memorable night. Um, um, Andrea McArdle came. Channing came more than once. Actually, you know who came? John Williams. Oh, oh really? Interesting. He was then conducting the Boston Pops. Right. He was musical director for 10 years. And he was brought to see the show by one of the violinists. Of, uh, <laughs> it was actually Michael Dukakis's father-in-law, Harry Ellis oh. Dixon, was one of the um, oh. um, violinists in the Boston Symphony. And he loved our show and he brought John Williams. Um, um, and casts trying out of town or if tours were coming through Boston, they would all come and that was so much fun. I mm -hmm. did Jennifer Holiday then, <sighs> oh, Scream Girls. And oh. the, tour, the tour of Dream Girls came, came through Boston. And when the lights came up and discovered me in that enormous fat suit, I saw all these people stand up in the back of the theater, start jumping up and down. You know, they were very, very, very <laughs> My thighs have gone condo. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. I remember the, uh, the lines that uh, I've forgotten more than I, than some people have ever learned. Right. It's amazing. The yeah. lines that have just, that are in the head. Um, Adi, I know you don't have too much time with us. So I want to ask you who came to who you remember seeing you, you saw, you did the show in New York. So uh, some, Amazing okay. legends came through that yes. supper club. Yes, people did. Although I will say, because I was kind of in the second year, um, uh -huh. a lot of people had seen it. And I remember years later, I met Miss Lauren Bacall, who did not come and see it. Uh -huh. I don't know uh -huh. she ever did because she didn't want to know. And I said, you know what? That's just as well because we'll be friends now because <laughs> you've never. Liza never saw it either. From what I understand, I she was downstairs. I was at Paulson's upstairs doing Forbidden Broadway. She was downstairs at another show down, uh, not Paulson's. At that point, it was whatever it was. They had two venues upstairs and downstairs. And yeah. She was downstairs, and yeah. so I went up to her and said, "I, you know, I just want you to know I do you in Forbidden Broadway." And um, uh, she said, well, "I have to come see it." And I said, "No, that's okay." <laughs> and um, I, I said, "I, I just." whatever you may have heard, I just want you to know it's done out of absolute love and respect. And she of course was a kind and delightful and elegant and lovely. And the yeah. guys that were with her were going, you should see it. We <laughs> should take you. They just, Oh, wanted to cause trouble anyway. Cool. All right. So D uh, I'm going to say goodbye to you and say hello to some of the other ladies. That's if great. That's okay. Uh, and I yes. really appreciate you coming. You're welcome. And I'm happy to be here. Hi to Donna. I work with Donna. Who else is here? Lori Hamill. All right. Who well, let's together. let's bring Donna and Lori Hamill into the into the party so you guys can at least uh, uh, chatty chat a little bit. Hi. 
Well, I quickly have to say, Donna, how's your daughter? I know that's a personal thing. You'll, you'll tell oh, me. Oh, she's great. Oh, good. Great. good. Camp counselor at the Y this summer, at the lake. The tough What? Camp. Yeah. She's okay. almost 19 all right. years old. Well, all right. We're going to be talking about chicks pretty soon. So anyway. let's just, yeah. <laughs> we digress. <laughs> but anyway, I mean, uh, uh, I mean, D, while you're here, I mean, in, as I look at all these ladies, uh, particularly Donna and Lori, it would be it was a big deal when you came to see the show. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know, for us, it was a big deal when you were you in the show. Did they spoof Will Rogers? I don't I don't know. I know they did City of Angels. Eight million stories. Oh, in the okay. City of Angels. Nobody oh, understands. That's right. The plot yet. That's right. <laughs> Well, so, so I remember there was a line. I was classy as D. Hody. Yes, that's right. What was what that? was that? Oh, that, was, that was Zip. Somebody did Zip. Yes, zip. that was you, Christine. Yeah, that must have been me. Must have been you. Because somebody said, "Oh my God, D. They say your name." I was like, "Oh no, la 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 la." And they said, "No, no, it's funny." He was nice. I was like, "Okay." <laughs> it's funny yeah. though. I such fond memory as, of it. I, I don't know. I remember having this discussion with Chloe Webb, who we went to LA and did it at the comedy store uh -huh. and uh, with everybody, Gerard, everybody. And um, that's the, uh, the, that replacement cast was Patrick Quinn, may he rest in peace, J uh, Jason Alexander, probably you, Christine? No, not me. I hadn't I, long I, before my time. I'm not sure, I'm not sure who the, oh yeah, for sure. I just remember the first time I met Jason Alexander, I mentioned that I'd done Forbidden Broadway. Now, he was a big, fat, important Seinfeld star at that point. And he looked yeah. at me and went, you know, one time Gerard yelled at me. He yelled at me. He just he went right back. He went right back up the birth canal to Forbidden uh, Broadway. The trauma. <laughs> the trauma. I just happened. loved it, it. I never worked so hard in my life vocally or mentally and you know, the hour and a half, 15, whatever it was a night. I, but I loved, I have to say, I loved every minute of it. Mm -hmm. uh, that. <laughs> it's great to hear. And you were there for the, really the magical beginning of it when it was all just sprouting up and starting to become yeah. uh, something. And yeah, a phone mean, machine message or something that Gerard created, you know, an answering machine message. Travel back with me on that. Oh, for Wow. Or Nora May Ling, I think, that, you know, a spoofy thing because they all went to school together, right? Boston. Yeah. Conservatory. I was there with Gerard, too. Yeah. So. Um, and and he, would, he would write things on napkins while he was working mm -hmm. at yeah. waiter jobs and stuff like that. <laughs> well, thank you, Dee, so much for being here. Thank and, you for uh, asking. You know, pleasure. please, a pleasure. I'm glad we got to do this before Stars in the House ran out of, you know, opportunities because, uh, um, by the way, Stars in the House, just so uh, I may as well say it while you're here, has made, for the Actors Fund of America, over $1,032,000. One and oh. if you would like to wow. donate, please just, uh, there's stuff scrolling and there's, uh, uh, hold on, I got I to gotta look at all the paperwork. But anyway, there are, there are ways of donating. Check it out, check it out on the screen. Mm -hmm. And we're going to announce some, um, uh, some of the donations as the... Uh, as the uh, evening, hold on, I'm there. She is okay. Um, as the evening progresses, and I am a, a a recipient of the generosity of the Actors Fund. This is the apartment I got. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Listen, they do great work. They have I'm helped. I'm telling so. you, they do great work. Not only are they generous, but they also have fabulous people working to 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 you know uh, extend that generosity they have the best social workers the kindest most like calm people yeah. who know how to work with actors and people in the arts <laughs> so please honestly let's raise let's let's break a little record for for stars in the house um and uh and raise some more money for them because uh it, it's it, it's near and dear to my heart that's for sure anyway thank you d hody Thank you. Such Love a you. Pleasure. Bye. See you guys soon. Be well. Bye. Now, have any of you ladies worked together? Yeah. No. Like no, I know no. I worked with Donna. I worked with Lori. I worked with Karen, but never in the obviously we were partners, but have Lori, you partnered I up? Know, we ever, I guess we never did it together, Lori. Donna and I never did Forbidden together, but we worked together. And Donna and I never did Forbidden together, but we've done other, we did yeah. mm -hmm. Christmas and Hell together. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> we were the blonde track. We were both yeah. nice, blonde track. Yeah. <laughs> so we couldn't be in it. So Lori and I met doing Forbidden 
Broadway in Denver. Was that when we met? It is. Okay. It, yes, yeah. it is. The yes. great um, time when there was the terrible flu that John and Bill got, and we had to do all right. kinds, and we had to fly somebody in because you and I never got sick, but the guys got so sick. Yes, and they the, even and made the, the paper papers. Read, the newspaper read "Star Felled by Illness." It was John Friedson, our <laughs> producer, who was also our star, and uh, yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. Also, the best story about Denver was this one: we were doing the Ethel Merman Mary Martin number, and uh, Mary Martin sings, "I hear." I don't know what the words are. I keep singing, but my voice is air. And she's singing and Ethel Merman's over at the piano watching her. And she's like, oh God, she's commenting very loudly. And at one point she goes, Jesus Christ. Well, we're in Salt Lake City. No, it wasn't. Wait, wait were you in we did Denver Salt and City? Salt Lake City. All right, so, but, Salt Lake so Salt Lake City, we I think was our first one. All right, it was and Salt Lake Denver City. I lied. Like, I lied, Lori. Yeah. I'm sorry. That's I'm okay. My, no. I bought a lot of rocks in both cities. And anyway, so I, uh, uh, the producer comes up to me afterwards and says, you know, the Mormons are going to have a problem with you saying Jesus Christ. Is there any way you could say holy shit? <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I also remember about, about Salt Lake City is that we did so many versions of the show and had to fly somebody in at the la last minute to take over. We did like two men, at what two women and one man. Yeah, man, yeah that was the first. That for me. But there were so many versions of it and Bill Selby was um, supposed to get ready for the Phantom and Christine, <laughs> you and I were backstage and we were singing the Phantom of the Upper Rudda. Yeah. The Phantom of the Upper He wasn't coming and he wasn't coming he wasn't coming because there was a different list that was downstairs because we'd done so many versions of it. So he's just down there thinking, yeah, what I'm yeah. doing. Why are they singing so stupidly up there? I don't know. And then he realizes and then he runs out on stage and he said, the phantom apologizes for being late or something. Insane. Sorry for the delay. Yeah, sorry, for the delay. sorry for the delay. But um, actually, I want to play, um, if we can, uh, some of Donna's work in Forbidden. And because Great. we just mentioned the lovely Bill Selby, this is a little love letter to you, Donna English. Uh, David, if you could cue that up a little love letter to donna english that uh bill selby wanted me to uh give to you tonight so uh if we can uh I feel afraid that king and I's too coy. I whistle a song I'm tune and take out all the joy from the play. Good, Your Majesty. <laughs> and I stole this roll from Patty. That's because she is a fatty. Now everything's as if she never played this. Pa! Quality. I really hate this show, but God, I need the dough. I gotta do this show. I tell you, fellas, I am something to see. Although I should have brought my boys back with me. And 
Wasn't that nice? Wow. Bill, Bill Selby did that for you. Amazing. Yes, he Amazing. stayed up to the wee small hours to make that. That was mostly Forbidden Broadway Strikes Back. It was such a great production. And um, Karen, I just, I apologize. I couldn't find any video because once all of us really were saying uh, videotapes were expensive to get copies of and we had no Gosh. reason to post them and Cell it's like have computers <laughs> like yeah so it, it's a miracle we have anything but i believe me i would love to have played something for you i'm going to move on now and i just want to say goodbye to karen but ask karen i want you to just give me your forbidden broadway just uh, you're so articulate about it you it's it's been a, a very important part of your life and just uh, having seen the most recent edition, too, we were talking about it on the phone the other day. You know, comment on three plus decades of Forbidden Broadway out there in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, it just remains something I'm so proud of, too. It taught me so much. It taught me so much vocally, and it really helped me hone my, my comic chops. I mean, I was 29 when I started doing it. And I and you learn you learn so much from your fellow cast members. Um, I that's that was just such a privilege. The people who walked who walked through that dressing room and and as we all know, sometimes the best show is backstage <laughs> uh, 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 rather than, than on. But the travel. You and I went to Japan with Forbidden that's Broadway. Right. We did five cities yep. in '93. No internet, no cell phones, and I hated seafood. <laughs> And oh, I was watching you shove sardines and fish and tentacles uh, in your mouth, and I was like horrified. I ate nothing but uh, Wendy's baked potatoes and um, uh, chocolate. That's what I had the entire. Those are the only things that tasted like food to me. But yeah, we've been. Uh, I know. Uh, uh, and uh, you know, and and the friendships we've known each other since then. I'd been been through a bunch of things <laughs> that it's, will rem it's, it's remain lovely. unnamed. There are probably only uh, under a hundred people who've done Forbidden Broadway over the years, mm -hmm. and that it's an it, and we all we all know that language, and uh, the and Gerard being the common denominator, the guy who wrote it, who would run in at five minutes before curtain. I'm making a switch. I'm making a change. I want to change that order. Mm -hmm. Or here's a new lyric. You know what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, we all have that whatever sick and twisted little muscle or creative muscle or piece of DNA that says, Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Why not? And they, but the weird thing is that he knew how to pick them because oh, yeah. there's no way to know that until it's trial by fire, you know, but it was a, it was a special, uh, it, you know, and our time in Detroit was special, but I'm going to say goodbye to you and bring on Dr. LaPook now. So keep on listening because we're going to get some, some uh, updates on what's going on in the world out there regarding, uh, uh, our health and taking care that we don't screw it up now that we've gotten this far. Goodbye, so ladies. goodbye to my beautiful goodbye. friend. I love you. And yes. let's say hello to Dr. Hello, Dr. LaPook. Hello, Christine. Together again for the first time. Yes. Do you like my lovely apartment? I love it. And yeah, isn't uh, it beautiful? I love your guests and the whole situation. Well, I, I'm very, these are special people and it's a, it's a fun show and we love to laugh. And, uh, as a matter of fact, that's where, you know, we are co common denominators. I love your father-in-law, Norman Lear. And the last time I saw him was at the place where Forbidden Broadway played. He came to see Spamilton and, uh, that's another, for, uh, for, um, 
Gerard Ellis Andrini creation. Because uh-huh. uh, laughter is important and laughter is, I've been mentioning earlier, if you'd heard, or maybe I was saying it to the ladies off screen, but I've been watching the Carol Burnett show uh-huh. and I have wished I had discovered it earlier on in the pandemic. I really, really do. Because nothing can hurt me during the Carol Burnett show. No, yeah. and all of the Harvey Corman and, and uh, Tim Conway, the scene with the dentist where he accidentally injects uh, his leg, and he's, well, I mean, and of course, the Gun with the Wind take off with the drapes, and anyway, the best. Yeah, the best. it's a total joy. So I have a question for you. Yes. Full disclosure, I got fully vaccinated, um, so, uh, you know, I wear my mask outside and in public and take it off when I feel safe, And but I've decided I'm going to keep masks and wear them in the winter, and I like the idea of them. But, and forgive me because I have not been paying attention, I'm going to tell you the truth. I have uh, two friends married, fully vaccinated. She got COVID. She had a fever and had a miserable couple of days. He got quite sick and was in the hospital. So what are we to learn from that? So these are breakthrough infections and they're, they were expected and they're happening. Um, remember in the trials, uh, they were about, uh, the, the messenger RNA vaccines, Pfizer and Moderna were about 95% effective at preventing illness. But you know, that's 5%. If you have hundreds of millions of people taking it, you're going to see a bunch of people with infections. The, the very promising news is that if you look or discouraging in one way, promising, it's promising for people who are, uh, who are vaccinated is that the CDC has looked at data in various states from the last six weeks, uh, six months, sorry, six months. 99.5% of all deaths are in unvaccinated people. 99.5% okay. of all deaths. So you may still get it. And uh, mm-hmm. but the odds are extremely high that you're going to get a milder uh, form of it. Um, not always. There have been a, f- a very small number of, of serious cases and even deaths, but the odds are that you're going to be protected from serious illness. What people are looking at right now is this issue of if you are double vaccinated and you get infected anyway, you have a breakthrough infection. So far, the amount of virus in your nasopharynx has been small enough, it looks like, that you're not a it's very unlikely you will infect somebody else who is vaccinated or even unvaccinated. Okay. Oh, okay. It's not right. a virus. It seems to be mutating so that there's more and more virus in the nasopharynx. So what that means is that over time, you know, what we have to do is we have to get everybody vaccinated. So this, this virus can stop mutating and causing more and more mischief because every time it infects somebody, I've said this before, it buys a lottery ticket to mutate. It may be a one in a million, one in a billion chance it's going to mutate into a form that's more dangerous. But when you have trillions and trillions of viruses out there and a lot, you know, tons of people being infected, you're just asking for trouble. So the way we stop this cycle of infection, duplication, mutation, variant of concern is by getting everybody vaccinated. Um, and I loved what you started out with by saying that you're doing what's comfortable for you. And I think that we need to have empathy right now as we emerge from the pandemic for the fact that people are gonna have different tolerances for risk and we've gotta understand that. We can't shame anybody for wearing a mask, not wearing a mask. I mean, you're you're gonna do your your thing. Um, The truth is that when you're in indoors and somebody's not wearing a mask, you don't know whether they're vaccinated or not, even if, even if people say they're vaccinated, we don't know that for sure. Um, You have to think about it. Lindsay Marr, who's an aerosol scientist, I think had a lovely analogy, but think about it like the weather. Um, Where are you? You know, is it raining? Is it cold? What do you wear today? What's the temperature? What, you know? And if you look at the CDC website, they came out yesterday with new guidance for children, for for, uh, schools. I really encourage everybody to take the time to read that. Just Google CDC school guidelines COVID, okay? They very much, they beautifully outlined the layers of protection that there are, right? So you have to first think, okay, where am I? Am I in a high prevalence area? There's a lot of infection where I am, or is it a relatively low area? That's good. Or what's the vaccination rate where I am? Is it high? Is it low? Or the vaccination rate where I'm going? 
So I went to my niece's wedding and Memorial Day. Every single person we know of 143 people were vaccinated and we didn't wear masks indoors, okay? Now we have a new variable. And, and by the way, it's now been all this time later and nobody got sick. We know nobody got sick. But now we have a new variable, which is that the Delta virus seems to be um, more infectious and it may even start to cause breakthrough infections, more breakthrough infections. So what do you do? Yeah. You have to do what's comfortable for you. And outdoors, where there's almost infinite dilution, if you're six feet away from somebody, you know, the, the odds are are overwhelming. You're not going to get it from somebody like that. But if you are indoors or if you are outdoors really close to a lot of people and you're in an area of high infection where a lot of people are, are infected, there's very low vaccination rate, you may decide, I'm going to be more comfortable wearing a mask. And as you said, and I've had the same thought, when the winter comes, uh, we're having cold and flu season coming up now. If I'm indoors in a play, I may walk in maybe not wearing a mask. I, you know, I'll put my mask on when the lights go down, um, even if I'm vaccinated. Why or on not? the subway. On the subway, I'll wear my mask. I ain't gonna. Like why, why would I not? <laughs> now that I know that it can keep me from getting sick, just yeah. sick, sick. The By the way, thing. speaking of masks, I want to show you a picture of. Um, I don't want to get, 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 finish your. No, show, uh, well, I was just going to say the CDC is very concerned that everybody understand that we have cold and flu season coming up. Respiratory syncytial virus is already here early. So there's a lot of sniffles and there are going to be a lot of kids in school with snotty noses, right? And the question is going to be, is it COVID or is it, just, it, or is it just a virus? And we have to do a number of things, including if you're a parent, don't send your kid to school if, they're, if they have the sniffles, please. If you're a grown up, don't go to work. If you have the sniffles, you're not doing anybody a favor. You're not being a hero. And we have to do more testing, more home testing, so that we can know whether or not we're infected. So what were you going to say? About I was going to say that there's a photograph of uh, two people I know and you know uh, wearing their masks very responsibly <laughs> in first class on their Beautiful. way to Greece. Beautiful. And Beautiful. Uh, they just wanted to say hello and see the noses at all of us on their way to Mykonos. That's they, James I hope and they have Zepardesky. a great, great time. And when they're outside in the beach in Mykonos, I think they're going to be quite safe. Uh, I'll and, say. Uh, <laughs> it might look odd for them to be wearing masks on that so beach. So listen, Dr. Lapook, I'm going to see you on September 12th, I think, which is the Stars in the House live at Town Hall. Yes. And I look forward to seeing you live and in person instead I of, you know. I look forward to it, too. And again. You're yes. Please have empathy for, for each other. When Absolutely. you know, as we emerge from the pandemic, everybody's going to have their different risk tolerance. They're going to want to do different things, and let let people do their things that make them feel comfortable. I would be. I would love it if the thing people would like to do right now is to give to the Actors Fund of America and uh, sure. <laughs> uh, check out the uh, the information on your screen because we want to continue to raise money. They've raised already a million. One million thirty thousand dollars, James and Seth, and this whole organization, uh, the, the the stars in the house crew, and thanks so much for everything you've done for it. Well, so you're welcome. I mean, uh, it's unbelievable that you've given uh, your time to this. It's been an honor and a privilege. And everybody, get vaccinated if you yes. can. If you're if you're at all able to get vaccinated, and there's no medical contraindication, all right. get vaccinated. Love it. We're gonna get back to our divas, and thank right. you. And I'll see you in September. I'll see you in September. In September. Bye. Did a duet with Dr. LaPook. All right. I want to bring in Suzanne Blakesley and Gina Kreismar. Two more ladies I've spent millions of hours with. Millions of hours with on stage. Suzanne and I first did the show. She <laughs> <laughs> Suzanne, I don't have mine right now. Suzanne but I, and I first did, you know, Suzanne, I did the show in New York City. The first time I did it in New York, I left Denver, came to New York to do the show. We did it at the Comedy Sewer, right? Denver, right? <laughs> yep. Affection. A, a very suspicious <laughs> smell, very suspicious smell, which I later learned was dead rats. Yep. Um, Gina was the understudy. I was. Uh, Gina is. A woman of, I think Suzanne would agree, remarkable skill over and above anything that you or I can do because she can do anything you and I can do, only not backwards, but invert it. And she can remember it both. And uh, being an understudy for Forbidden Broadway is uh, yeah. a, a test of the central nervous system or something. <laughs> I don't know, man. Uh, uh, there's always tranquility and 
and then Suzanne in the evening sometimes. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. You really got sick. You were very healthy girls. Yeah, yeah. I had you do that once in a while. But you well, were great, and and you withstood our potty mouths. <laughs> well, you know, I never had a potty mouth until I until Forbidden Broadway, and now I have a favorite word that I like to conjugate in every possible way, <laughs> and I never used it until Forbidden Broadway. Yeah. Now I couldn't get through a day. I say it to Alexa all the time. <laughs> um, but anyway, so Gina, when did you start with this? Who started first? Because you guys were pretty close, right? No. No, wa I, wa Washington D.C., nineteen eighty-five. <laughs> hey, let's look at let's look at some Suzanne. I want to look at some of Suzanne's videos. Hers are fancy because they involve work with the symphony. Oh, I have, I have some videos for you. Nice. So let's play a couple of Suzanne's videos. Give them the old glossy, flossy, saucy, fossy um. Twist and contort and throw some trash in it And the reviews will all be passionate Give them the old spread the fingers Wear a bowler hat Wiggle your pants like ants are in your thighs Though the production may be shoddy, everyone likes oh. a naked body. Saucy falsium, and they'll never catch wise. I hate Julie Taymor, she doesn't have a clue. My neck is breaking, wearing her designs, and subluxated too. Her puppetry is stunning, but now I must confide. Although it looks great from the audience, it's torture here inside. Can you feel the pain tonight? The strangest headdress brings the cracking bones. Cherry cartilage kills all living things. Can you feel the spring tonight as your deltoids throb? I can hear your crushing vertebrae. What a lousy job! Awesome. Oh, the fun. We're, that was in Australia. Yes. Yes. Oh, that was, oh, this show gets around, man. That was incredible. It was an no. incredible experience. It really was. And there, um, Ed Stoudemire, um, when he was doing the last performance of Aspects of Love, <laughs> We've had on, the, on his butt cheeks, he wrote, I heart Oz. <laughs> and the orchestra... Literally, the cellist, her her uh, bow went flying across. It was done. It was unbelievable. I didn't unbelievable. know that. I mean, I know yes. sometimes the boys choose to do that number. Uh, it, it, the um, the aspects of love number is done behind a. Explain it. Uh, it, well, it's it's done behind a big sheet, so it's supposedly we're all nude, and yes, um, I've. Uh, Jason Graw and Jerry McIntyre were <laughs> a little bit uh, um, undressed Revealed. totally. Yes. <laughs> it was great fun. It was great fun. I loved it. Yeah. That, that I think all symphonies thereafter would be really dull for those, <laughs> for those uh, classical uh, the, the performers in Adelaide. Yes. They probably went to work the next night when we weren't there. I went, Oh, Bad. I would say I, that working at, in with the orchestra and doing the show with the orchestra because I've had the opportunity to do that too was a highlight of my career with Forbidden Broadway, wouldn't you say? Just yes. being able to hear those strings and the horns and oh, it's fantastic. 
Fantastic. Yeah, we had we had magnificent um, musical directors who did sound like an orchestra. But it is true when you got the full, uh, and I think Catherine Stornetta, Catherine Stornetta did the Stornetta arrangements. Did the arrangements? And yeah. we were in Singapore. Uh, uh, Lori, were you in? If this bring Lori and um and um Donna, Donna. back, uh, was Lori in Singapore? Who was in Singapore with us? I can't remember. Um, but anyway, I remember she was doing them while we were in Singapore. Um, are, are we? Are they? Did we lose them? Are they oh, locked in the green room? They might be locked in the green room. <laughs> Darn okay. it. Um, Lori, were you in Singapore? Yes, we were in Singapore together, okay. Christine. So yeah. that's where uh, it's, it's it's staggering to me that I know. here's the thing, and I I, I should have Karen Murphy mentioned uh, Japan. Um, and who else did it in Japan here? I did it after this, this, this time after you. So okay. you can so, imagine I went after. You know, with yeah. the with the um, uh, translations oh, running up and down on the side of the proscenium yeah. and how they timed it so that I don't know how, but the laughs, when I did it anyway, the laughs, and it wasn't because I was funny. It was because this guy translated it right and flashed the translation at the perfect amount of time for them to read it and listen and laugh right where we needed the laugh to go. And Christine, it really saved my rear end once. Um, when we were in Osaka, um, the super titles played as they did. And I was doing Barbara Streisand, my man. And somehow only that time I was transported and I felt like I was in the movie and I was saying the actual words. <laughs> Oh. But they played, they, they showed the parody lyrics. So people laughed, but I oh, couldn't right. believe I know. got off track and I was singing the real ones and got back on later, but they still got all the jokes because the jokes were in super titles. <laughs> That's beautiful. That's, That's beautiful. Now, um, so Suzanne and I did forbidden Hollywood too. We then went after we did forbidden, um, Broadway in New York, uh, it closed. I mean, I made my New York debut and the show closed like two months later. Um, and we went on to do Forbidden Hollywood. But before before we do that, I wanted to look at our little, um, we have a little photo gallery here and ladies chime in if you notice any, if you have any memories of any of these photographs. Let's see a couple of photographs. Lori, <laughs> expl explain to everybody what that is. Okay, well, so they had they were doing all this renovation down in Times Square, and so they took pictures of various people, and I was dressed as Julie Andrews there. It was so bizarre, but that's what it was, you know. I had a picture of me as Liza Minnelli, uh, and that was on 42nd Street between Times Square and 8th Avenue when it was all under scaffolding and a nightmare, and we were sort of part of that renovation. <laughs> Let's use some more pictures. Uh, so that is Karen Murphy. There's Karen Murphy. This is in Detroit. Um, there I am as Ethel Merman. That's Bill Selby down below who made the wonderful video for Donna. And John Friedson is in that doublet and hose next to Karen as our, uh, he is our producer as well. Was pro oh produced my God. The show. That was um, a Man of La Mancha number, right? Yes. Yes. Let's do another picture. Mm. Oh my goodness. There we are, Christine. That's that's me and Lori and Lucy Arnaz. That's and Bill I guess, Selby. Uh, Suzanne, this oh my God. was that's Brad Lynn Redgrave and Brad Oscar and Craig Wells. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. And this was this was a big night because it was the first night I did Forbidden Broadway for a celebrity, and it was Fran mm. Drescher. And after the show. Uh, Brad Oscar said to her, so what's going on in your life? She said, well, the nanny premium is tomorrow. And I thought, oh, that's <laughs> cool. I mean, it's an odd title, but okay. What's the nanny, you know? And then I, of course, never missed an episode. But a couple more photographs, and then we're going to hit the videotape. <laughs> that is Lori Hamill's alter ego, someone who looks very much like Lori Hamill. What is her name, Lori? Margot Rose Furterer. Yes. Uh, uh, how, can people watch Margot Rose Furterer anywhere? They can, yeah, on MargotRose.com. <laughs> and actually, she interviews um, uh, Karen Murphy on one of the episodes. Uh, do we still have Karen here? I'm here. Oh, good. Yeah. Oh, I thought, okay, Yay. great. Um, so let's see some more pictures. Now, I oh. showed this picture, Gina, just because Gina understudied. And I can't tell you how many times, Gina... <laughs> someone would say, oh, I saw you yesterday or last Tuesday in the show. And I'd be like, oh, thank you. I wasn't in the show last 
that was Gina. They always thought oh, that. Oh, I love that photo. That Beautiful. It, nice? it was one of the opening nights that I wasn't in the show. It was one of the opening nights. Oh. It was at, uh, and that's my mm. favorite picture ever of Forbidden Broadway. Backstage at the at the Ellen Stardust basement where we did the show for a million years, and my nephew Sean. It's my favorite picture ever. He's twenty seven now, but you know. Anyway, um, oh, and I want it. Yeah, go ahead, honey. This that one right there is um, the only time I was ever in like a paparazzi magazine, like. It was like some, what are the, you know, like the star or something like that, that Carol Burnett came to see, but they ran it in, that was from um, Cleans Up Its Act. They ran it like, you know, in one of those. Oh, really? Like, like a grocery store, um, you know, UFO. Oh, you're magazine. kidding. Yeah. So it was kind of cool. I want to, let's play Lori Hamill. Um, we, we, we don't have Lori Hamill in costume, but we have Lori Hamill doing a mm. Forbidden Broadway staple, um, which, Explain the story, uh, Gerard. Do you remember how Gerard said he based this on actually having seen? Um, no, he I actually saw that. Julie Andrews yeah. sing this song, mm. the melody that this song is based on, as an older performer, and he swears that this is exactly how the song was orchestrated and arranged. The truth, yeah. <laughs> has probably sung that <laughs> sung that one. And I have to say when um I was down in Florida doing the show, um like on one of those times when we did it, maybe maybe Gina you were there, I don't know. But Kravitz Center? Yeah, and Carol Channing came to see the show and I had done Julie in the show and she said Carol Channing's like, "Have you seen John in English do Julie Andrews?" <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations, Donna English. My God. Remembered by Carol Channing. <laughs> That's pretty fabulous. And during dur during Forbidden Broadway, I met Carol Channing about 10 times and she never remembers meeting me. Hey, let's <laughs> let's play Suzanne's uh, uh Channing. We have another little snippet of oh, Suzanne God. doing two divas in a row. But you can't call me bitter, though my whole career is messy as my lipstick smear. And I Just a day in the life. Yeah. Just another day at work, you know? 
And do you ever, I often would say uh, in rehearsal, you, some of you may have heard me say it, upon being asked to do something and doing it, uh, I just stop and go, excuse me for a minute. I went to college. You know, I just, I don't know. I just had a, did you go to college? You did? I just, just checking. Um, We're the, the, uh, to do this. Like we got paid to be I, I so silly and wonderful. It's fantastic. Uh, I know. Let's see some more pictures. We have more pictures, right? Oh, oh that was, God, said, yes. Remember that? Yes, closing that closing sister. night of Forbidden in New York City <laughs> at the Theater Theater East, affectionately known as the Comedy Sewer. Brad yeah. Oscar's family had a Barney, <laughs> a Barney in person. A Barney come in and go, "Hi, everybody! Happy closing!" <laughs> Oh, this is the Titanic number. That's Ed Stadmar, I think. And, and yeah, and that's there we are, Christine. Jim Walton. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And as I always say, dignity, always dignity. There I am on my on my knees. Christine, I have a story about yeah. that teapot. And could, go you know, ahead. Stardust, we called it, but but we also called it Ellen Star Dump. Oh. Ah. Or as uh, again, Alvin, there Alvin, was no. Evan Colt would call it the theater in the ground. Oh, God. And there was a smell, and then there were roaches that would crawl because the Coke syrup was oh. backstage because it hadn't originally been a theater, but then they made it into one. From upstairs, so, the diner upstairs, the guns with the Cokes, yeah. the, the Coke, yeah. the syrup containers somehow oozed down through the upstairs. Yeah, but the but if you remember... There used to be the bus boys would come down. They'd have to change the tubes. Yes. So they'd be off stage right, and we'd be like, "Excuse me," and there'd be like bus boys there changing the thing. But the story I want to tell you is: so there was a roach problem, and one night we're waiting to go on. We're standing. Do I want to, do I want to hear this? You remember this? And we're getting ready to go on, and you're dressed as the teapot, and I'm dressed as Belle, and you're in that teapot, and of course you have no hands. I mean, you're like stuck. In the because you're the spout, and then your other hand is underneath. And there was a roach like this big, like crawling on your costume. <laughs> no, you didn't, you didn't tell me this because I probably would have had a nervous well, breakdown. I don't think I did actually. I think I just went like this, and then we yeah. had to go on stage. You didn't tell me, never but knew it. That's Donna, the side of Forbidden Broadway. Donna, the, um, yeah. in Theater East, the phone lines went down because of all the roach stuff <laughs> one day. So we are sisters in Roachdom. <laughs> Karen, any favorite stories, Karen? Um, uh, not, a, not along the little animal. <laughs> in, when you and I were doing uh, the show together in Detroit, I was doing the Phantom number. And as I collapsed at the end, the chandelier caught my wig. <gasps> oh. And the chandelier went up with my wig on it. And there I am, wig capped, <laughs> collapsing on the floor. Fortunately, I could just lie there in my, put my face in my embarrassment in the floor and you know, uh, <laughs> in my humil and, um, um, humiliation. And I think it was Jeff Lyons, the character actor, milked it forever. Just mm. stood there, looked at my wig up on the chandelier. Look to the audience. You were giggling at me through the curtain, Christine. Oh, I bet I was. It went on. It went on for about five minutes. I mean, <laughs> I, 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 I'm going to play a, a, a montage that Bill Selby made, and I, it's of my stuff. But I honestly, I'm only playing it because it's reminding me of moments that we've all done. And then you come back and you tell me some of your memories of having done those same moments because we all have. Dead. Great song, a 
young creature, but I'm wrong, so don't go. Thank you again to Bill Selby for doing that at very last minute. Um, uh, it, it, it just it's so many numbers. I think of the Miss Saigon number and, and cracking up. You said Jeff Lyons cracking him up. And first of all, to the people watching, we could spend hours just talking about just the sociology behind the show and the structure of the show and the psychology of the show. But there are so many stories. There's just so many incidents that that could take up, uh, you know, another two hours. It's, and those are the funny memories. Uh, I don't, I, sometimes I just don't even know where to go when I talk about forbidden Broadway. Um, it was Lori raising her hand. Yeah, I was just raising oh. my hand just quickly. I just want to say too, it's interesting because so many of us have also done the show in other contexts. Um, you know, a SWAT team theater when we go out and do it one, you know, over the weekend and and just get together with a group that maybe you've never performed with. I you're doing that. this harmony, you're doing this one, and then you do the show. You have a, a sound check. You do the show, and the next morning you leave. And I, I felt like not only in New York and the audiences that were so educated about the shows, but also all over the country and many countries that we went to. But I remember specifically doing the SWAT team theater when we go out. And I know that we did it at a county fair. Oh, and you're kidding. People, people came into like that tent where we were and didn't know what it was, but were laughing and excited and happy and gave us a standing ovation. And then Right after that, the next place we went was the Smithsonian. And the theater we performed in was where Yo-Yo Ma had been the night before. And they gave us a standing ovation. And that feeling of this material not only works in any context, but that people get the joy out of it, um, that, that, that is astounding to me. And, and it's so wonderful to be a part of something like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Agree. Uh, let's look at this is a this is a classic and this is Gina doing a classic that's as old as Forbidden Broadway is honestly and it's 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 the kind of what Lori's talking about it never gets old you don't even have to know your musical theater you just have to how do I put it the concept of what's funny is evident right there in the room with you you don't even have to have a history of musical theater to understand why this is just good comedy and uh, joyful. 
I'm 30 years old. <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> and I haven't worked since I played Nanny when I was 10. But maybe there's hope. And there's another example played a tiny the club like Feinstein's at the Nico. It's it's played all manner of places. I mean, you know, Susanna. I met Suzanne doing it in the smallest backstage yeah. on the planet Earth. <laughs> and then right? Suzanne and I did it at the freaking Adelaide yeah. Cabaret well, Cabaret <laughs> Festival, but it was a symphony. Yeah. It was a vast, huge, beautiful, amazing, and, and and everything in between with all of you ladies. I mean, honest and true. And we've met our idols, have we not? Ha Karen, who have you met, uh, you know, I mean, over the years doing the show? Um, I mean, we we did it in Detroit. We met... We met Red Skelton. You know how I remember? Because I have and a Marcel Marceau. I have and, that photograph. I still have that photograph. Karen, it's I finally you, had... It's you, me... It, and it's this uh, big. Jeff it's, Lyons and and um um I don't forget his name, it'll come to me. But Marcel yeah. Marceau and Red Skelton. And you asked Marcel Marceau. How no, he asked stay, me. How do you stay so svelte? No, he said it to me. And his answers were, were was lots of vegetables, <laughs> no sauces. <laughs> Oh he was God. <laughs> I <laughs> have that picture. I still he have said, that picture. Vegetable <laughs> fish, no sauce. Oh my God! No sauce. That was an amazing, yeah. But Red Skelton, and and I'm going to say it just because why the hell not? He's dead, and so is she. He said to me, Red Skelton said to me when he saw me do Ethel Merman. Um, we chatted afterwards. So oh, Ethel Merman was good. She'd screw a door off a chinsers. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, had to. Had, I'm sorry. You never heard it. Shh, hush. <laughs> anyway, I, 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 I think we have to go. It sucks. Um, people, everybody That's out there, please give money to the Actors Fund of America. Make a donation yes. of any yes. size. Uh, they have saved my life because of my personal uh, challenges with uh, vision loss and stuff. They've helped me out with housing. And I am, uh, uh, you know, um, personally witnessing all the other wonderful things they do. And Seth Rudetsky and James and the whole Stars in the House team have raised $1,032,000 so far. On September 12th, they're going to be doing Stars in the House live in New York City. I'll be there to perform. Dr. LaPook is going to be live and in person, which I think is the most exciting of all the people who are going to be on that stage. And maybe we can get him to sing. Um, uh, uh, Karen, my darling, thank you. We met in Detroit and have been friends ever since. Donna yeah. English, you and I met at, we met at the, the triad doing Forbidden Broadway Strikes Back. Lori and I met doing Salt Lake City. I thought it was Denver. Honest mistake. Sorry. <laughs> but then we did Denver. Oh, and there there's Denver. That's yes. Denver. In case anybody didn't believe us, there we are. <laughs> did we ever do Denver? Yeah. I remember people were stopping beside the road and taking pictures of us. We As kept we on pulling off to the side of the road and I'd get out and go higher, higher. And then we'd drive up higher and then I'd look at, no, we can go higher. We can go higher. We did. Um, and Gina, of course, I met at the, I met at the, uh, the first time I did it in New York. She was the understudy and has gone on to, of course, star in the show, but is uh, a constant like nobody else's, in my opinion. Just And it's oh. been a joy to work with all of you. Uh, we just feel so blessed to be a part of this family, don't we? Yeah, right. absolutely. Yeah. Special community. Special absolutely. Community. I would have had Gerard here. We don't have enough room on the screen to have all the people every time. <laughs> and I tried to pick the women that I worked with the most. And, and then I was full. The screen was full. 
there's yeah. just not enough. I wish we could just make this a, a, a constant, this getting together. And Suzanne and I, as I said, we started, you were my first Forbidden Broadway in New York. I was very nervous to be doing it in New York and very flattered and honored. And then it closed. And uh, <laughs> it's just closed. And I thought, oh, well. And then a few weeks later, they said, we're LA. taking it to Los Angeles. And yep. we worked at the Tiffany Theater. And that evolved into Forbidden Hollywood, which was talk about meeting our idols. Yep. You know, that was out of control. That amazing. was when Red Buttons came backstage, right? He certainly had, did. Suzanne, Suzanne <laughs> did you and I do the cruise, the Mediterranean? Yes, cruise? we did. Oh, yeah. That's where we met Red Buttons. Yes. I stayed connected with, with him. Nice. For of course you did. I love that. <laughs> I had dinner at his house in Bel Air, and I oh. saw him in New York. Yeah. He, did, you, did he wear his lime green blazer because he came backstage with that red hair and a lime green blazer at intermission red buttons came i'm like reading a book at intermission and i look up and there's red buttons and, I, and he said hello i said hi he's backstage in the wings and he said yeah, i just wanted to say that. hello because i couldn't wait till after the show i have to leave and i said well thank you what a joy well, he was delightful uh, christine my favorite th story uh in new york what they would always ask the celebrities to stay so they said to william shatner hey would you mind staying and meeting the cast and he said well yes i would <laughs> <laughs> oh wow <laughs> And, you know, um, I just have to shout out really quickly to Donna. It's because of you, Donna, that I ever got in because you decided to go do, like, regional theater someplace. And so right. I got to replace you. So they brought me in. So I'm, I'm so grateful. And, Suzanne, I remember when I came out to understudy Forbidden Hollywood in L.A., you took me to the beach. Oh, so yes. You yes. just you said, we're going to the beach. I was like, okay. Oh, nice. Thank you. Kevin McGlynn oh, just texted and said, stop it. You're making me feel emotional. <laughs> <laughs> we are a family. We are an absolute family. Uh, everybody keeps in touch. Everybody respects and admires everybody else. Thank you to Gerard Alessandrini, of course. I think the ultimate thanks has to go to Gerard for just keeping this content coming and coming and coming. And uh, it all coming from a, a, a place of wicked goodness, I'd say. Um, and, 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 a, and a big, beautiful heart who, who loves, who loves the, the music and, and loves the people that make it and tell the stories. And it's been, um, it, you know, as I said, I've been watching the Carol Burnett show and as I watch it and I think what a gift it was for them to do that show. And, and Suzanne, we met Harvey Corman. He came yeah. to see, well, but I thought to myself, you know, we had the theatrical version of that. We did. Um, yeah. honest and true. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, uh, something that um, puts a smile on our face still. Yeah. It still does. And it's still around, you know, Gerard, is, Gerard still has a glint in his eye and um, a pencil sharpener and uh, he's and napkins and napkins to write on. <laughs> yes. Because as he would say himself, he may have to take a waitering job after this past year. So, we're all just, you know, waiting for the next opportunity to have some fun together. And uh, ladies, thank you so much for the honor of working with all of you and to, and to Dee, who we had to say goodbye to, and to Gerard. And thanks to Seth and James for Stars in the House. Please be generous and do what you can for the Actors Fund. Um, uh, anybody have any upcoming gigs that's going on? I'll be at Feinstein's on Tuesday. I'll be at Feinstein's on Tuesday. I'm so looking at January. <laughs> I'm supposed to do Gentleman's Guide in Boston in April. Okay, and Donna, what, what are you doing, Donna? I'm doing Clue, the play, at Paper Mill in January. Nice. We did the wow. Playhouse uh, last year, um, and, well, right before the pandemic. That was the last Are you year. Colonel Mustard or Miss Scarlet or? I'm Mrs. White. Mrs. White, okay. Played All by right. Michael Kahn in the movie. So. Ah, Boston. Met her at Forbidden Broadway too. Okay. I know, I did too. I was there that We night. were there that night, yes. Yeah. So it's yes. a fabulous cast and we're really excited about it. So it All right, last girls. And the first thing I'll do Thank again. You. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Christine. Can't wait to see you all on stage. Donate, everybody. Donate. Call me, please. Call me if you come to LA. Bye. <laughs> yes, yes, absolutely. Bye.